All right, thanks, Dick Ferro. Chances are a lot of you are going to start looking for toys for your kids or your grandkids or nieces or nephews for Christmas. There's so many to choose from, but which toy is the best? And another question is, could some toys pose a risk for, to your child's hearing? Well, to talk more about it, we're going to talk to uh, Dr. Jackie Scholl with the uh, uh, Scholl Center, the founder. And also, we're also talking with uh, Monica Bine. And uh, she's talking about educational toys that promote uh, language skills as well. So thank you both for joining us this afternoon. Uh, Dr. Scholl, first off, hearing. A lot of people don't think that, oh, there's nothing wrong with toys. But what do you mean when you say that hearing could be affected in a child with a toy? Well, a lot of the toys are just too loud. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we've got, I, there's a couple that I've put here that, you know, look pretty benign when you go looking in the stores, but if you take them out of the package, um, this particular one um, is about 80 decibels, all right, which wow. is pretty loud. Yeah. And then the Press and Go Animal Parade, um, I think that the elephant or the rhino will come in around 106 dB, which can be very damaging to small ears. And what would happen? Are you talking about a child who has the toy right up against their ear? Yes. And okay. Which, when you're talking about six months um, and under, or six months and plus, mm -hmm. typically they're on the floor close to the toys. So parents need to realize that um, when they purchase these toys and they try them in the store in the box and say, "Oh, that doesn't sound so loud," to do a little bit of research because some of them are very loud once you take them out. Okay. And what kind of long-term effects are we talking about with hearing damage? Um, I'm testing younger and younger children. Uh, with hearing loss younger and you know the other thing too is we live in a really electronic society which is one of the reasons why um, Monica Bine is with us today she um, at our practice one of the things we do is we're always promoting uh, listening because children aren't mm -hmm. really taught to listen so much anymore mm -hmm. and language and all of our parents are included in therapy sessions Monica actually wrote a book about um, teaching speech the fun way and there's actually a chapter in here that talks about um, ways to use things you probably already have around the house. Okay, and really quickly, Monica, could you tell us about some of the things that could help a child when they, you know, speak properly and to really adapt very quickly? Yes, th one of my favorite new toys that I just saw at Barnes & Noble, it's been around for a while, but they, they just came out with it again, is, is headbands. And uh, each player gets a headband and you uh -huh. get to put it on and, and you have to guess what you are. <laughs> Jackie's a cow right now and, and she would have to guess that without knowing. <laughs> what her headband says so you have to be able to ask questions and answer questions that's my one of my uh, the funnest toys for language and then um, blocks I love blocks you can talk about on and off and building it up and falling down and going over and under and and uh, the little people farm is great any farm set with the animals and one thing I would suggest to parents is it, play with your child anything that gets you involved in the play is great and explain what you have before you show it so I have a, a pink animal and it says oink and they say it's a pig yes it is there it is and then they get to play with it That's okay a fun way to very good language. we're actually out of time but thank you so much for joining us both for uh, this very informative deal about you know loud toys and of course educational toys and the headband is cool <laughs> thank you so much